All right, good evening. You yeah, are welcome to another edition of um, Import Export Platform Facebook Live from 3 Team Pest Street Academy. Remember, this is a program that educates our listeners in various areas of international trade. And we are very more passionate about trade, especially on the export side. We've started discussing export market entry strategies in recent times. This evening, we'll be looking at part six of export market entry strategies, part six. We've discussed part one to part two to part three to part four to part five. And in part five this morning, we talked about the um, orders you need to cross in entering the export market. We talked about the email proposal, what should be the content, and we discussed full corporate offer. Full corporate offer. So now we continue our discussion on export market entry strategy. There are a number of strategies for market entry and development available to a company that seeks to internationalize. Internationalization is trying to set up business in other parts of the world and trying to earn income beyond your enclave. And when you begin to do it across continent, that company is said to be globalizing because it's going beyond continent. But if I'm just doing it in two, three countries, probably close to me on the same continent, I'm just internationalized. So there's a difference between internationalization and globalization. Now, this includes exporting, establishing a sales subsidiary abroad, licensing, establishing a production subsidiary abroad. Joint venture may be used also to establish a subsidiary and production facility. Now, I said something some time ago about um, the fact that if you want to start a new in export, rather, there are three options available, three modes of entry. There is the export mode, in which we have direct and indirect export. There is the partnership mode, and there is the investment mode. In the partnership mode, I'm practically working with someone else to take advantage of the market, either through licensing or through joint venture agreement or through contract production, or through franchising. But the idea is I'm partnering with someone to take advantage of the export market, and I'm leveraging on the advantage of the partner in the export market. By virtue of probably, they already have a presence, and I'm just leveraging on their presence to be able to assess that market. Though an approach beginning with exporting, progressing to open a sales subsidiary, and finally, establish a production facility is very common. So can you see the progress? You start with exporting, maybe indirectly first, and then directly. Indirectly in the sense that the good is given to someone else who then ship it on my behalf. Direct means I am the one shipping it myself to the destination. I can progress from that to opening a sales subsidiary. So I have a partner at destination we form a company together, and there's a sales subsidiary there. That means I'm not just exported to that country. I now have an agent, a distributor, a partner that I have an interest in that company in terms of the ownership. And I then leverage on that to progress to the next level, and that next level is actually having a production facility. So people move from export to sales subsidiary and finally establishing a facility. And any given company may start with any of the entry strategy and go to the other stage. So I don't necessarily have to start with the export mode before partnership mode. I can start with partnership mode and move on to investment mode. Or start with investment mode straight up. Even though people move from, you know, from someone say you start crawling before you start running. <laughs> so some people want to crawl and then start walking and then run. That's an approach many people want to do. But not necessarily that you must go through that route. I mean, Dangote, for example, go into a number of countries where he is in, Nigeria, in, in Africa on one major strategy. Investment mode. Just start production. I think it's only one somewhere in South Africa that 
It doesn't have that kind of model. But in most places, they have the model. Investment mode. Just go for an investment mode. Just register a company there and start operation. Some firms use different strategy for different markets, only exporting or licensing to some smaller market while establishing say subsidiary or property in larger market. So now you now then have to de de uh, decide on how you want to enter. Since most of the audience that listen to me on Facebook are most likely going to be SMEs. Most likely, you are better off starting off with export mode and then moving on to partnership and finally subsidiary. In export mode, you ship the good yourself directly to the destination. You do the marketing survey yourself. You do almost everything yourself, including the production. In partnership, someone else is producing. Someone else is marketing in the value chain from R&D to production to marketing and sales to distribution. Along that chain, you are handling some and someone else is handling the other. Nike, for example, we do promotion and do R&D. But they do not do the actual delivery, and they don't do the, they don't do the production. So they've outsourced that, and they've become a global company because of that awesome model that they have. And this is basically also telling you as a manufacturer that you don't need to be everything in this business. I know of a manufacturer whose product is being shipped in different parts of the world, and she's not. She is not involved in the export. She gives the people to do. The people are doing it and they are buying from her and she's fine. So look for the area in the value chain that you are more convenient with so that when you are going for partnership, you are partnership, partnering with someone to handle the other area that you probably are not very competent in or you don't have what it takes to be able to do it effectively and efficiently. So partnership is a very, very good one. As a matter of fact, it's a very viable tool for expansion in the trade. In fact, your growth will be limited and restricted significantly if you don't have good partnership. Partnership helps to expand, to scale, to increase in such a way that even to offer new products and services and increase your of, of, of your customer base. So some firms use different strategies for different markets. In some markets, some will just export there. In some other market, they will do licensing, and these are small markets. But in big market, they really want to go there. For example, a lot of people want to come into Nigeria and produce in Nigeria. And they're not just looking at Nigeria, they're also looking at West Africa. So instead of They've exported here for a while. They now want to produce here and use it as a base to other West African countries. An essential first step in planning and strategy development for entry into an export market is the company need to assess its readiness to enter the foreign market. The challenge for many is that they are not ready for the foreign market. The challenge for many is that they are not ready for the foreign market. And that's a big, big challenge for many. Many, and many want to go in, but they are not ready for it. They are not ready for the issues in the foreign market. They are not ready for the challenges in the foreign market. They are not ready for the costs in the foreign market. And a number of other stuff. And because they are not ready for it, then it affects the way they go about the business. So there are different types. Sorry. Um, so... So a, a firm that wants to go into this market then have to assess its own readiness. He needs to assess how ready am I to go into export, to go into export market. How ready? How ready am I to face the challenges? How ready am I to overcome the barrier? How ready am I to incur the extra cost? For example, we are going to Côte d'Ivoire next week, Wednesday to Friday, and we are doing an exhibition in Côte d'Ivoire. Now, that program in Côte d'Ivoire, 
It's a cost to any SME grade for that program is paying about 100,000. The large corporate are paying about 250,000. Now, that kind of fund being paid by these people. That kind of fund being paid by these people is a cost they need to bear because they think of going into a export market. <laughs> because they think of going into a export market. That's a cost they need to bear. A very interesting and important cost they need to bear to go into a export market. Is it not interesting that people want to go into export, they don't want to spend money on research, on learning and understanding how the market runs. Now, I was talking to someone today who wants to go into export. He has a product and he's looking for markets. And someone said he should contact me. And I told him, oh, look, this is what I think you should do because he said he's already exporting. He needs more market. And he said, the reason why you're not getting the more market is because you don't have enough knowledge to be able to. Just to be able to learn and understand what exactly it takes to enter into that market. Many don't understand what it takes. They don't understand how. And they're not making enough effort to be able to get that done. So he just won the market. He's just looking for partner to enter the market. He's not seeing it as, I need to think and strategize. I need to strategize on my pricing. He just want buyer, order, ship. You know, it's so interesting the reason why a number of the business in Nigeria don't grow the way they should. We are so quick for transaction at the expense of other important things that we need to learn to get the business done. So this guy now is not concerned about training. He's only interested in transaction. He's not concerned about training. He's only interested in transaction. And because he's not concerned about training, he's only interested in transaction, the implication of that is that he really does not care to be trained, to learn. Just give me the buyer. Let me know how much I'm going to sell so I can give you a cut, period. No strategy to check who are those that have this product in the market. How much are they selling? Who are my competitors? How much are they selling? Where are they getting it from? How efficient is their production? What price can I enter with? If I enter with this price, what will likely be the response of the market? What should be my penetrative price? What kind of pricing strategy do I want to deploy? No, 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 no. That's not interest. That's not. That's not something they want to think about. It's so interesting, so interesting, and that explains why a number of our businesses are not growing the way they should. A number of our businesses are not growing the way they should, because many have not learned to understand exactly how to be able to enter into the export market. There are strategies to be deployed. We are already in part six of export market end strategy, and we are not going to finish anytime soon. We might get the time past ten, maybe finishing on Friday. Why? Because of all that need to be learned to be able to get this done. There's so many things to learn, and the essence of learning is for light, so that you can become more effective in your strategy that you are deploying, and you're not deploying it blindly. You are very strategic. You, are, you know exactly why you are doing what you are doing. Any firm, regardless of its size and experience, must determine just how ready is he before he takes move to enter into the market, the export market. How ready are you? Do you know there are softwares, actually, which are decision-making tools that can be used to assist a company in determining and judging if that company indeed is ready for export market. There are software that company can deploy to judge and verify and confirm if the company is truly ready and interested in entering the proposed export market that he wants to enter. So this software helps in decision, as a decision-making tools 
that can be used to assist in determining or judging a company readiness for the export market. Although these piece of software are not exactly the same, but the major area cover are quite similar. The software are different from different individuals, but they have some similarity. Number one, competitive capability in the domestic market. How competitive are you? In the, if you are already pricing yourself out of the market in the domestic market, how will you survive in the export market? If your price, because if your price is good at home, most likely you will be able to have a good price for sale abroad. If your price is too high at home among your competitors, most likely you might not be able to compete abroad. Motivation for going international. I don't know how to explain this. As in, I don't know how much to explain this, that your motivation in business generally must be right. The motivation is not just about export. It's about business. Your motivation in doing business must be right. The goal of a business is to make profit. The purpose of a business is to create value. If you focus on the goal, that would define your mystery and mortality in that business in just a matter of time. If you focus on purpose, that will also define your growth, your increase, your expansion, and your, 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 your uh, um, sustainability in that business, just a matter of time. Many focus on what they will get today. Few focus on what they intend to get tomorrow. That you did a shipment, you didn't have profit, does not mean you never have a profit. What are you doing? To adapt yourself to that market. What adjustment do you need to make? That's what that result is telling you. That result is basically telling you what adjustment do you need to make to be profitable in that market. What is your motivation for going international? Is it because of profitability? If it's just about profitability, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, that business will die. It's just a matter of time. Because you will not always make profit. Sometimes you might have to make losses. But what will keep you in that business is what you are seeing. What are you seeing? What is the horizon looking like? What are you seeing? What does the horizon look like? What are you seeing in that business? Some are not seeing any future. They are only seeing the money they are making today, today, and today. And because they don't see any future, that means no progress. Because you only go further when you see further. You can't go faster than what you can see. What you can see determines your pace and your speed. What you can see determines the destination you are headed. What you are seeing determines how long that business will last. What you are seeing become how much if that business will outlast you as a founder. What are you seeing in that business? What's your motivation for doing business? What's your motivation for export? You know, some people are not exporting for profit. Since after the recession, exporters in Nigeria has increased. Now, as these exporters increased, they've been able to Go into export business to salvage their existing business. For example, there are manufacturing companies in Nigeria who never thought of export or agro-export, but they started exporting agro-product because of the challenge they faced during the recession. During the recession, they were not able to assess dollar early. Their production, production slumped. Some of them sacked the staff. Some managed to survive. But they suddenly realized we are an endangered species. 
We are in danger fishing in the sense that the lifeline of our business is in the hand of the Central Bank of Nigeria, in the hand of the federal government, in the hand of the policy of the government, in the hand of the decision of the government, in the hand of whoever it is that is taking a decision on who gets how much forex every day in Central Bank, and a number of them woke up to the reality of generating their own forex themselves, so they started exporting. But what's interesting is that they are not just exporting, they are exporting mainly to generate foreign exchange. They don't want to be prof to, to, to incur losses. But a number of them have incurred losses. Serious losses. A number of them have incurred losses. Serious losses. But they continue. Because they know it's a learning curve. They can fix it. These are big corporate in Nigeria. But they still want to export basically to generate foreign exchange. So they now increase the volume of their own product they are exporting. But more importantly is that they are now exporting commodity themselves. Is it not interesting? <laughs> is it not interesting? That they are now exporting commodity themselves. It's interesting. Awesomely interesting. Awesomely interesting. In those, in that wise, those organizations have a different motivation beyond profit. As long as your motivation is not just profit, the chance of survival in export business is high. However, if your motivation is simply profitability, sorry, you are in the wrong place. Mickey Ogbais, thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. If that's your motivation, sorry. 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 Why? Because you must have other things driving you. Such that at the end of the day, when you go through and tick and thin, there's something else driving you. When you go through some losses, there's something else driving you. And this is very important. If you don't find something else driving you outside profitability in business, that business cannot survive. Because when you see things that you don't like or that doesn't encourage you, you drop. You drop. I say you're not interested. Why? Because you're not getting the right profit. What is your motivation? You know, in Nigeria, in Africa, the poverty level is so high, so people are thinking only on what to eat and drink. But for sincerely, that should not be the basis for you going to export. Number three, commitment of owners and top management. You know, sometimes the sales guy have a target, and in the course of trying to meet his target, he looks into export, export market. And sometimes the management is not keen on export market, even though they've given a, a sales target, they are not keen on export market. And because they are not keen on export market, they are not able to render the right support structure, give the right support structure to the sales guy who is looking for market abroad. So if there is no commitment by the owner of the business, if there is no commitment on the part of the top management, then the business is not ready for export. If the motivation could go international, is just about profitability, that business is not ready for export. If the business is not competitive locally, such that it can really do more well, pricing-wise, with its competitor locally, such business should not consider export. Product readiness for export market. <laughs> is your product ready for export market? Is your product ready? In the state that product is right now, is that product ready for export market? In the state that it is right now, in that state, in the current state, is the product ready for export market? Some products in the state they are, they are simply not ready for export market. Anybody have, uh, sorry, the product is localized. So most things that's been, that's been done that that product is all about is local. Now the implication of that is that the company is not looking at any other opportunity 
to expand. So the adjustment he needs to make are not something he wants to do. If you are going to export your product and it's a food item, you must mention the name of the food clearly, mention the constituent clearly, mention the nutritional fact clearly, mention the batch number clearly, mention the expiry date and date of production clearly. More importantly, he needs to have a barcode. You need to let us know if there is any allergen inside. You need to let us know also that um, if there is if it's genetically modified product, all the and the, of course the contact detail of the owner of the goods of the manufacturer, all this must be stated on the body. Else. <laughs> Product readiness for the export market. One, a number of our products are, are okay. The only major product issue with products from Africa, from Nigeria, is packaging. If we just get the packaging right, then we are fine. Skill, knowledge, and resources. The reason why we are doing this is to get the skill, knowledge, and resources out. Skill, knowledge, and resources. How skillful are you? How knowledgeable are you? about the subject matter in question, about the export business, which is why we've been talking about the executive diploma in export business management and the executive diploma in export trade finance. Executive diploma in export business management and executive diploma in export trade finance. And we're talking about the fact that this kind, this kind, particular product or training program will help you to acquire the needed skill the needed knowledge and all you need to know as an export manager or as an export trade finance, export financing, a financier. As an export manager on one hand and as an export financier on the other hand. And this is so, so, so important. This is so, so, so important. The skill needed, very important. Then experience and training. So I'll go over that again. How do you know if you are ready for export as a company? Export readiness. Competitive capability. Are you more competitive in the local market than the export market? Johnny or God, thank you very much for joining. Good evening. Are you more competitive in the local market than the export market? Number two, what's your motivation? Is your motivation only about what you will make? Or you have other important motivations such that even when the, you go through the learning curve and you had a little loss, you are still going to go ahead. What is the motivation? The commitment of owners and management of that organization. Commitment and own, of owners and management. Then product readiness for export market. Product readiness for, export, for foreign market. Skill and knowledge and resources to drive the business. And then experience and training. Experience and training. Thank you very much for listening again today. This is, remember, this is Import Export Platform Facebook Live from 3 Team Pest Trade Academy. We have been discussing understanding export market entry strategy. And today we discuss part six. Tomorrow morning by 8 a.m., again, we'll start and we'll discuss part seven. I'm hoping we'll probably be able to get to part 10. And we have enough information for anyone looking for information as far as strategy to be deployed in entering export market is concerned. Thank you very much for listening again today. My name is Dele and I'm from 3 Team Pest Trade Academy. Have a good evening and see you tomorrow morning.